In the next few videos, we're going to go over the nervous system. This video is going to start by taking a look at the major functions of the nervous system and the organization of the vertebrate nervous system. We can think of the nervous system as having three major functions. The first is high level control over body systems. When it comes to control of the nervous system over the body, we often think of voluntary control. That you can voluntarily lift your arms or lift your legs. And that's absolutely correct, but the nervous system has the control over many other physiological processes in the body. We can consider, for instance, digestion. Usually, you think of the gastrointestinal system as releasing enzymes and gastric juices when you have food particles in your gastrointestinal tract. But that's not the only way that digestive juices and enzymes can be released. For example, before you even ingest the food, if you see food, if you smell food, or if you even think of food, the brain can actually stimulate the gastrointestinal system to start releasing digestive juices and enzymes, essentially priming the body for feeding. Another example would be the control of reproduction by the nervous system. The hypothalamus is a brain structure that releases a lot of different hormones. Many of these hormones are involved in the regulation of the reproductive systems, but others are involved with controlling other physiological processes. In subsequent videos, when we look at the endocrine system, we'll discuss the hypothalamus in more detail. A second major function of the nervous system is integration of sensory information and cognitive function. The nervous system has many sensory neurons that are able to sense both external stimuli and internal stimuli. External stimuli would include, for instance, if you touch an object that is soft or rough, if you touch an object that is hot or cold, or if you get injured, if you get a cut, those sensory neurons are able to detect pain. Examples of internal stimuli would be, for example, if your body is feeling gastrointestinal discomfort. Again, you have sensory neurons that are able to detect that discomfort and send that information to your brain. In your brain, you're going to integrate and process a lot of that sensory information. And this has to do with cognitive function. When we sense these stimuli, we're often conscious of them and we're able to decide how to respond appropriately. So for example, if your body is very cold, then your body's nervous system is going to tell you to go somewhere warm or put on more clothes. And something else that's important to know is that this integration of sensory information to produce a response doesn't always have to be conscious. So a good example that we're going to discuss later on is reflexes. If you touch something sharp or something painful, something noxious, then you will instantly essentially pull your hand back from that noxious stimulus. And that entire response of touching a painful stimulus and responding by pulling your hand back all of that can be mediated by the spinal cord alone. So that's our second function. The third major function of the nervous system is adaptation to external influences. Again, we can consider several examples of this. So one would be if on your hand, at first there's nothing in your hand, you can't detect any stimulus. But if I take this marker and I put it on my hand, I can detect that an object was placed on my hand. However, once the object is on my hand, if I just leave it there, soon I can't even tell that marker is there. Essentially, my hand has adapted to the sensory stimulus. However, when I remove the marker, now I can detect that stimulus has been removed. So that's one form of adaptation. Another example would be if you eat a food that makes you sick. Well, the next time you see that food, you probably aren't going to want to eat it. So that's another form of the way that the nervous system can allow the body to adapt. All right, so now that we've considered the major functions of the nervous system, let's now look at the organization of the vertebrate nervous system. 
the nervous system of vertebrates in general can be divided as the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. And in this diagram, you can see this division. The central nervous system, which we often just call the CNS, consists of the brain and the spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system consists of the cell bodies, the neurons, that are outside the brain and spinal cord, as well as the nerves that exit the brain and the spinal cord. Within the peripheral nervous system, we can break this down into the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. The main distinction between them is whether or not they are voluntary. So the somatic nervous system is voluntary. This includes the sensory neurons that receive information from the skin, muscle, and joints, as well as motor neurons that control skeletal muscle contractions. So essentially, when you're able to move your arms, that is voluntary movement from the somatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is involuntary. Again, it includes both sensory and motor neurons. The sensory neurons receive information from the viscera. So that could include sensory information that is telling you that you have discomfort in your gastrointestinal tract, but it could also be more minor stimuli. For instance, when your stomach is full, your autonomic nervous system is able to detect the distension, the stretch of the stomach. Um, the autonomic nervous system also has motor neurons. These motor neurons are able to control the contraction of smooth muscles as well as the secretions from glands. So smooth muscle contractions, this would be thinking about the gastrointestinal tract driving the contractions in the stomach to break down the food particles or the peristaltic uh, contractions that move food particles along the gastrointestinal tract and also secretions from glands. So again, the nervous system does have control over the secretion of gastric juices. So this can cause the stomach to release gastric acid. The autonomic nervous system can actually be further subdivided into three divisions. The parasympathetic nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system, and the enteric nervous system. The parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems are antagonistic to each other. And in subsequent videos, we're going to look at these two in more detail. In general, you can think of the parasympathetic nervous system as driving rest and digest processes. And the sympathetic nervous system, you can think of it as driving fight or flight responses. And finally, we have the enteric nervous system. The enteric nervous system is less important for an AMCAT, but is referring to all of the neurons within your gastrointestinal tract that regulates GI functions. So here are all the different divisions of the nervous system in vertebrates.